Hi guys, it's uh, Inam Kafour here with the Google Nexus 7 tablet. We're going to show you how to root this device and you need to go through a couple of steps before we connect it up. Now before we begin, I'd just like to make you aware that you should really be doing this when you get your device as it will wipe everything on it. Or if you've already got stuff on it, then make a backup of everything or move it off the device to your PC or something um, while we go through the, the routing process because it will wipe everything off it. Secondly, neither myself or Google take any responsibility for anything that might go wrong in this process, so you do it entirely at your own risk. Right, now we got that out of the way. What you need to do is go down onto your settings from the bar at the top, uh, go down to developer options, and if it's uh, not on already, just turn it on from the top, uh, and then turn on USB debugging, so just make sure there's a tick next to it. Then go back one to uh, the settings menu, then go down to about tablet and make a note of the build number. We'll need that at a later date. So make a note of the build number and then connect it up to your PC. I've got it already connected, but I'll just connect it again. Just to make sure it is in there. And what we'll do is then move over to the computer. Now it's displayed the autoplay box on the computer, so we'll get rid of that because we don't need it. I will put a link in the description where you can download the Nexus root toolkit from. It's an .exe file, so I've got it on my desktop, so I'm just going to run it and install it as administrator. I recommend you just plonk it on your desktop for the time being, just for ease of use. Just install it in the standard location, as you would pretty much do with any other application. And it says, uh, choose your current model type and Android version. Now mine's a D, but this is the closest matching to it for the Nexus 7 tablet, JR003C. So I'll select that for the time being, hit apply. Brings up the Nexus root toolkit version 1.5.2 window. What you first of all need to do is install the drivers for this. So we'll click on initial setup, full drive installation guide, automatic and manual. And we'll do a Windows 7 one here because that's what I have. Automatic driver configuration. Step one. Click OK. And it's going to prompt me to say install or don't install. We'll install the drivers anyway. It says enable USB debugging on the device, which we already did before we connected it to the machine. Right, we're pressing the OK button to initiate the check and you can see it says ADB status device connected now it's rebooting your device into bootloader mode as you can see it is on the screen as well now that your device is in bootloader mode please wait a little while to let Windows do its thing install installing driver software which it has hopefully your computer automatically configures your device as some sort of ADB device interface which it did as you saw the speech bubble in the bottom right of the screen you can check in device manager or just proceed to the connectivity check which we did whenever you think you are ready just press ok to initiate fast boot connectivity check ready so as you can see there checking fast boot status and it's got start at the bottom of the screen at the top of the screen rather and then it says congratulations your driver uh, your drivers are successfully configured rebooting your device and as you can see the Tablets rebooting. Press OK to exit this script, and we'll get rid of that autoplay window. So now that that's done, we'll come out of the driver setup wizard. We'll head over to the backup section here, because as I said earlier, this will wipe the device fully. So what we want to do is do a quick backup if it allows us to, just to be on the safe side. I'm going to do a backup of what it says here, system apps and data and shared data. So we'll do a create backup, Android backup file. Click OK to the warnings. It tells us where we want to store it. I'll leave it on the default location there. Hit save and it says rebooting your device. And as you can see, it reboots it pretty quick. To do this, your device doesn't need to be rooted before you do it. So, And even to restore the data, your device doesn't need to be rooted then either. So this is a good way of safely backing up your data before you root it. Press OK if you're ready to initiate the backup. Press cancel if you're yeah, we're ready. Get rid of that. And as you can see on the screen, it says a full backup of all my data to be connected 
uh, desktop computer has been requested do you want to allow this to happen if you did not request the data backup yourself do not allow the operation to proceed if you wish to encrypt the data put a password below I'm not bothered about putting in a password so I'm just gonna hit back up my data as you can see on the screen it says backup complete so we'll click OK to that file size 71.575 megabytes I think that's pretty small to be fair uh, before I go any further, what I'm also going to do is backup data media just to be again on the save side. OK, it's ready. And select the parent folder you would like to save your data backup to. So I'm going to put it to the same drive I put it before on oh, my data drive. So we'll leave that there. Checking ADB status, it says there. So just trying to communicate. Uh, pulling data media process finished. That was really quick. Right, so it's done a backup. You can also do backups of SMSs, call logs, contacts, that kind of stuff. But I don't need to because that's now backed up. So we'll just X out of that. Now before we can actually root the device, we need to unlock the bootloader. So after you've done the backup, the first thing that you need to do is hit unlock, what it says here. And as it says there, this will wipe your device, so make sure we've done a backup first, which we have. So we'll hit unlock and we'll click OK to the message. Check in ADB status, it says there. Device connected, yes it is. Now it says rebooting your device into bootloader mode. Right, now it says you should now see a screen on your device titled unlock bootloader, which we do. On your device highlight yes to unlock with the volume keys, then use the power button to select it. It might take a moment for your device to register that you push the button. Now, as you can see, if I bring that in closer, unlock bootloader screen gives you the bump about what we're doing. Yes, we want to, it's not in touch buttons won't work, so as it says there, press the power. Yes, we want to unlock the bootloader. Now, at the top, I don't know if you can see that it said unlocking in very small letters along the top, and it's rebooting itself. Now, on the screen, it says booting up your unlocked device, wait for your device to finish booting up, it might take a while or appear to be boot logging or looping, just wait. Once you've booted back up, go through initial setup or skip through it. Now enable USB debugging on your device again, select blah blah blah, you are now ready to go on to the routing procedure. Press OK to finish the script, then use root button on the main interface. Okay, so we just need to enable the USB debugging option in the settings and then we'll go further. So we've got to go through the install menu again. So we'll do is it UK. Get rid of the autoplay button on there. Hit next. It's already selected on the Wi Fi. Don't want them to use the location services. Should be ready to rock like it's new. So we're we'll going to settings as it was, go down to developer options, and then turn it on at the top there, the slider, then select a USB debugging there, and we're good to go. So back on the screen, we just hit OK to this. Get rid of the on, there we go, get rid of this. Right, so that's now unlocked. Next things we need to do is hit root. And what we'll do is we'll do a permanent CWM, clockwork mod recovery. Now this is awesome backup utility to take an image of the phone with all your settings, everything backed up on the phone. So I would recommend you include that as well. So we hit root. And it gives us a root Azus tablet permanently flash message. We agree to the, the message that we got here, so we'll click OK. It's just checking the connection to the device again. It's rebooting it into bootloader mode. On the screen, we get rid of that. And it remounting your device with root permissions. It's just doing a super user binary there, as I mentioned earlier. And the super user application as well. Setting file permissions. 
Who now is it? Oh, so back extension. There you go. Installing the clockwork mod recovery. Now lock state, it says unlocked there for the bootloader because in, what needs to happen is the bootloader needs to be unlocked before it can root. We did the unlock, it's just finishing up on the root as it is now. It says here, notification fast boot device was not found. In order for this to work, your device needs to be connected to your computer via USB. Use the OEM USB cable if it is available. The drivers, uh, your drivers need to be properly configured. Go through the driver configuration guide if you have not done so already. Uh, this is most likely due to your drivers not being configured. Use step 6a, 6b in the driver guide to get this working. Uh, TT, it is also possible that you just need to try again, refresh. Right, so just make sure that the device is connected okay. So unplug it, plug it straight back in again, and then we hit okay to give it another go. Get rid of the autoplay window. It's going through the BusyBox installer. I'm going to just unlock it. Now it says automated routing procedure complete. That's okay. So that's it. There's the super user app, so we'll tap on that. It says binary needs to be updated as it mentioned on the screen, so we'll hit continue. Suc uh, installation successful. Awesome. So that's done, we'll go back one, go into BusyBox 3, as we can see there. And it says super user access wanted, so we'll grant it. And at the bottom it's got install, super user permission, get rid of the message there, hit install. Installation of BusyBox is complete, as it says there, it was successful. There you go. So that's all done there, we can come out of that and you'll notice everything is stuck, you've lost all the apps on there which is normal, so what we'll do, just head over back to the computer and remember, on the Nexus toolkit here, there's a restore button so what we want to do is hit restore, it takes us back to the same menu again we want to restore the Android backup file that we created of all our applications and then it says, um, yeah we're ready to continue select the file that we initially placed on there Here goes dot AB file, hit open. It says check in ADB status. And of course the device is connected. It's rebooting. Get rid of the autoplay function. We're good to go, so we hit OK. As it mentions, the restorations here, so we're just gonna do restore my data along the bottom. It just goes through that process. It says restoration start in there. As it says on the screen, it says process finished. So it should have backed up uh, or restored all the data back to the device. So if you go into our applications there, we should see, there we go. We've got Antity Benchmark, the Dead Trigger, GTA games on there. We've got iStories, uh, the App Lock there, TV Catch Up, everything that we had on there before, which is awesome. Back on the Nexus uh, root toolkit, we also did a restore virtual SD card, so what we'll do is restore that as well, just to make sure that goes back. And it's still connected, so we'll hit OK. We'll select where we put that virtual SD card on the machine, and I was on my data drive. So I've just select the folder where it was, hit OK, and it says check in ADB status. Device is still connected, which is always good. Get rid of the autoplay window again. Just unlock it. It looks like it may have already restored it and it's doing a reboot. Get rid of the autoplay window again. And then it says process finished. So I'm good to unlock that. If we go back into there, that should have restored the film back, which is on the phone, not on the network. Yeah, that's playing fine. Let's have a look what else it's got. So I did have titanium backup on here before, 
So if we just locate that and just show you that it is actually rooted because it's asking for super user access, grant it and it's all done and it's saying it is rooted because it's now going in to the application whereas before it wouldn't have. There you go. That proves the uh, Google Nexus 7 tablet is rooted. It wasn't too hard. A bit too many reboots for my liking, but it, if it does a job, why am I? But good to go to remove it from the computer now, and we're done with the machine. Any questions or comments that you guys have got with uh, rooting the Google Nexus 7 tablet, hit them up in the comments section down below there. Hit subscribe from the button up top there. It doesn't cost you anything, and it's free, and you can check out some of our forthcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and we'll see you next time.